All right, this should be interesting. Joining me today are two former guests on the show. First, uh, on the left here is Jonathan Phelps from the Westboro Baptist Church, and on the right is former Navy Chaplain Gordon Klingenschmidt. Now, the Westboro Baptist Church is known, of course, for the God Hates Fags slogan. During his last appearance on the show, Jonathan Phelps said that homosexuals should absolutely be put to death. Now, on the other hand, former Navy Chaplain Klingenschmidt believes that the solution to homosexuality can take the form of gay exorcisms, which he claims to have performed a number of, with about a 50% success rate. Let's start there. Chaplain, uh, give us a sense of why do you believe homosexuals should not be put to death? <laughs> well, I'm a Christian, and I'm not a... Jewish person, although I've received awards from the Jewish Welfare Board, the Anti-Defamation League has recognized me for defending the rights of Jewish people. I believe the New Testament of the Bible, I, uh, it clarifies the Old Testament of the Bible, and I think uh, there's a distinction, if, simply if you look at the data from the Bible, that the God of the Old Testament is frequently described as hating some people. And the God of the New Testament is never described as hating people unless it's quoting the Old Testament. There is one time when it does that. But 43 times in the New Testament, I did a word study on the word hatred, and 43 times the word hatred is used in the New Testament, and it's never used in a good way. For example, Jesus commands us to love people and not hate people. The Bible says in Romans 5.8, God demonstrated his love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So the God of the New Testament is clearly a God of love and is never a God of hate. And so I believe in the Christian faith, not the Jewish religion, and that's why I'm different than other people. Okay, Jonathan, go ahead and respond to that. The chaplain making the case that the New Testament just doesn't indicate that God hates anybody. Well, of course, uh, the New Testament is simply um, quotes, paraphrases uh, in large measure the Old Testament. Um, look at Psalm 5.5. 5. It says God hates all workers of iniquity. And then look at uh, Matthew 7 and Matthew 25 and Luke 7 and chapter 7 and Luke chapter 13. And it says the Lord Jesus Christ talking on Judgment Day. And he says those that are on the left, he says, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. That knew you, that's a, that's a uh, word that uh, is talking about, I never loved you. Now, we have to define what the hatred of God is, and it's his purpose, to punish the wicked in hell forever. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ was the greatest hellfire and brimstone preacher that ever uh, lived on the earth. And so that's what the hatred of God is defined as. And the love of your neighbor is first spoken of, in Leviticus chapter 19, verses 17 and 18, where it says, it gives you the working definition uh, in words to this effect, thou shalt suffer, thou shalt not suffer sin upon thy neighbor, thou shalt by all means rebuke him about his sin, warn him about the sin that's taking him to hell, as a great mercy from the Bible, not from your notions in your head as to what you think uh, is taking him to hell. But what does the Bible reveal as to what's taking him to hell? Jonathan, I want to get your reaction then, because we've heard the chaplain react to the Westboro Baptist Church, God hates fags idea. The chaplain indicates that gay exorcisms can be successful. He says about 50% is his personal success rate on a gay exorcism. What is your position on exorcism as a solution to homosexuality, Jonathan? I'll answer that question promptly, but let me digress for a minute that the, the, the love that is spoken of there can have no objective meaning unless you're doing it pursuant to the Bible, and that is to tell them about the sin that's taken to hell. Ah, okay. we, don't, we don't hate uh, any individual. In fact, we manifest our love towards them by warning them about the sin that will cost them their eternal soul, and without repentance, uh, they'll end up in hell. Now, hell has to be a manifestation of, course. of God's of God's eternal purpose to punish the wicked in hell forever, which is the definition of his hatred. And as it relates to the brother uh, analysis, uh, the Bible talks in terms of there being two types of children, um, those that are children of light and children of darkness. So some of that special um, brotherly fellow elect, fellow Christian love uh, 
doesn't necessarily apply to uh, those that have have reprobated themselves. Now, let's talk for a minute about uh, that. Don't mean you don't preach the truth to them because we don't own salvation. God may very well manifest himself to that. In fact, Paul says he was the chiefest of sin. But the exorcisms. Okay, thank you. I'm glad you got me back on track there, because I was on a roll. Uh, exorcisms uh, are nonsensical. Oh. Uh, it, it is, uh, in terms of uh, some human power uh, to, and I, and I, would, I would caution uh, my good friend, Mr. Klingschmidt, that he should get his insurance paid up because there was a story in CNN.com that said uh, there's, they're going to sue you for that nonsense um, because those 50% of the cases that you lose, they're going to sue you. And those that, that supposedly you convert uh, will later figure out that was a sham and sue you. Fascinating. So I'd, uh, I'd, I'd warn you about that because um, there's, no, uh, there's no example since the apostles uh, or the Lord Jesus Christ directing uh, an evil spirit out of any person. There is an example of the demoniac of Gadara, and I recommend everybody read it. Okay. But, but that special hocus pocus, you know, with the head spinning and green pea soup flying out of their mouths, uh, kind of a scenario, uh, there's, there's no uh, Bible authority for that. Uh, outside of the New Testament church laying hands on those that are are sick pursuant to uh, James chapter five, right, and other examples as that. Uh, I think this is nonsense, nonsensical. Chaplain, um, please respond to that. The idea that exorcisms are nonsensical. Well, again, I have to go back to the Bible. Uh, I appreciate my brother's encouragement about hell because Jesus does teach eighty-eight times about eternal punishment in hellfire. Right. Uh, and teaches ninety times about heaven, so it's about the same. Jesus says the, the righteous will, or the forgiven will be rewarded, uh, the non-repentant will be damned. Uh, but as with regards to exorcism, it is a New Testament practice, and not only with the apostles, because in Luke 11, you see that Jesus, or maybe it's Luke 18, Jesus sent out not just the 12, but he also sent out the 72. Okay. He gave them authority over demonic spirits, and he said, uh, whatever... Authority God has given me, he's also given to you to trample on serpents and to cast out demons. He's commanded us to do this in Matthew 10. And any New Testament Christian who believes in uh, the Bible also has to believe that God has commanded us to cast out demons. And it's not like in the movies. It's not with pea soup and people vomiting and head spinning. I've never experienced that. What I've seen okay. is genuine repentance with tears when people repent and come to Christ— the Holy Spirit moves into their heart in a new way, and the devil departs from them. That's common with any conversion, uh, and I would challenge my brother to examine that. So I know that there's much more to be said about the exorcism, but in the interest of hitting a couple of different points, the, we've gotten, initially we, we've gotten the reaction from the chaplain to God hates fags. Then we've gotten Jonathan's reaction to exorcism. So now I want to go back to the chaplain and, and ask you, as you know, the Westboro Baptist Church and Jonathan personally are known for picketing the, the funerals of soldiers with the idea that soldiers who are dying overseas are being, it's a punishment for the U.S.'s acceptance of homosexuality. As a former member of the military chaplain, what is your reaction to the protesting of soldiers' funerals because of homosexuality? Well, um, you know, it's a complicated question. Of course, the is Supreme it? Court, I think, has come out and said that they have a right within the confines of a certain space to do picketing. But I think as a matter of taste, I personally find it uh, you know, reprehensible wow. that they would dishonor the memory of our deceased soldiers and sailors who die for Christian faith, for religious freedom, uh, and not necessarily, I don't, I don't know, having served in the military, I don't know any soldier who died for homosexual rights. They just don't think that way. Uh, so I know the administration thinks that way. We should be protesting the Obama administration and their policies, but not uh, our beloved soldiers who come back from war having sacrificed so much for the First Amendment, for your rights, Mr. Phelps, for your right to picket and protest. We should be honoring those who sacrificed so greatly for that privilege to have free speech and free religion. Jonathan, take it away. All right. So as a, as a, 
I obtained a degree in the in history, and I specialized in the history of the First Amendment, the adoption of the First Amendment. And the reason it was adopted, and I think no one can gainsay against this, that it is to protect the minority view. So if they died for my right to say it, then if I stand at a respectful distance so everybody coming in and going uh, are free to do so and express my viewpoint, which is a minority viewpoint, then certainly they died for that right. And that's the, the, really the only significance of their fight. But what has happened is the military has declared war on that minority view. They have literally done everything within their power uh, to uh, resist that, to fight against that. They hate the concept of the First Amendment. So I call you hypocrites when you say that you uh, do this in favor of the First Amendment. You despise the First Amendment, in my view. And furthermore, you understand that the manifestation of the love of God is that he grants repentance uh, to people. If he yeah, but what does that, that have to do with standing there with the big signs at a soldier's funeral, Jonathan? Because it says, uh, it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believed. Uh, and so we are, and the only example in the Bible you can find is not standing, standing in some pulpit, but standing out on the streets uh, in the main places that people come and go to, the hot spots, if you will, uh, that place where they're not invited to be, and reminding them of the consequences, uh, the eternal consequences of their sin. That's true love. That's true sacrifice. That's where it counts. Well, I have to tell you, I am shocked that two individuals who are so obsessed with being against homosexuality have almost absolutely no common ground at all on which they agree. I mean, Chaplain, we need to wrap up. I want to go quickly to, to each of you. Chaplain, is there anything you would, you're very anti-gay. Of course, God Hates Facts Church is very anti-gay. Is there anything you agree with Jonathan Phelps on? Well, as a chaplain, I was the guy who stood on the street corner and defended the right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. I even sacrificed my own career right. for the First Amendment freedom to say controversial things like the name of Jesus. I agree, and I, I would defend Jonathan's right to uh, pick it you know, in the right place at the right time, as the courts have said that it's allowed. he should be allowed to do that. But I totally disagree with his speech. The Bible never uses the word fag. The Bible might refer to them as sodomites or homosexuals, but uh, I think it's disrespectful in some way. The God, the God of the Old Testament 45 times says that he hates sinners, but the God of the New Testament loves sinners. And so, But I think any agreement? Uh, my, my concern is that Jonathan wants to practice Judaism, and David, if you love homosexuals, then really what you want to practice is Christianity because that's the God of the New Testament is a God of love. I'll just leave it there. Jonathan, I'll go to you. Anything you agree with the former chaplain about? Well, yeah, to actually answer your question, uh, and he touched on it, and that is hell. And of course, by agreeing to hell, he has to then agree to God's eternal purpose uh, to punish the wicked in hell forever, which is, can only be rationally the uh, manifestation of his hatred as God defines it. He doesn't define it differently in the Old and New Testament. Uh, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever, the same author of both books, the same spirit that interprets uh, to his people both books, that manifests the truth uh, to his church in both books. It's nonsense to talk about a different uh, deity in the Old versus the New Testament. Okay, well, I guess then what we have here is an incredible situation where we have two completely unrelated and unconnected and incongruous anti-gay movements. We have been speaking with Jonathan Phelps of the Westboro Baptist Church and former Navy Chaplain Gordon Klingenschmidt. Gentlemen, thank you to both for having the discussion. Thank you, gentlemen. God bless you, David. God bless you, Jonathan.